So, hello Tony. Hello. Thank you that you give me the chance to interview. Thanks. Um, what is the essence of what you are saying or talking in your talks to the people who are coming to you? What is the essence of it? Well, the essence of the open secret communication is that it attempts to, ex to illuminate the nature of non-duality. It only attempts to do that. But it also exposes the deluded idea that non-duality is something that can be obtained or experienced. That's it in a nutshell. And, and what do you understand by duality, non-duality? Non-duality, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is only a term which points to that which can't be known. It's very misused now, non-duality. Non-duality these days is called almost anything. But as far as I'm concerned, it is simply a term that points to that which can't be known. It's, it's a term which points to the everything and the nothing which can't ever be known. So we, there's only an attempt to illuminate the non-duality. It can't actually be described. If it could be described, it could be taught, and it can't be. So. The Open Secret is not a personal teaching. Uh, it cannot experience? No, no, it can't be experienced, of course. How can everything be experienced? Who would there be or where would there be somebody who would sit outside and experience everything? It's impossible. So, and then the great, the great um, dilemma for the seeker is that the seeker turn, tries to turn so-called non-duality into a something that can be then understood and known and it can't be. And the people are only forms? Is a, uh, well, everything is, only, everything is only nothing appearing as everything. The walls, the bodies, um, what you call people, though as far as the um, secret is concerned, there is no such thing as a person, a real person. In fact, there's no such thing as anything that is real, everything is only an appearance of no thing. So there aren't individuals, but they fall into the uh, illusion of becoming individuals. And then they grow up believing that their individuality, individuality is real. They feel they are real people. Most people in the world are sure or believe that they are real. And that's the great dilemma. There is nothing it is real, everything is only an appearance. And this illusion has fallen away uh, in your yeah, system? only or? apparently fallen away because it was never real. So it was, it wasn't, there wasn't a real something to fall away. But the feeling here was that I was real as a real person and a real seeker. And then suddenly that whole illusion of being real simply evaporated. And when it did evaporate, it was recognized that it was never real. This is, this has happened uh, at once or uh, by and by? It, it happens, it's timeless. The, the dropping away of that which believes in time is timeless. <laughs> that which believes it's real and living in a story collapses, but that, that event is timeless. It doesn't happen in time. Um, and, there, and there's no one that knows it. It just mm -hmm. is that the whole idea that there was a person there seeking something is seen as unreal. Was there some cause? Was it effect? No, no, there, there, never effect is a, of there is no cause because don't forget we we're, we're not we're talking about something that doesn't really happen, so it doesn't need a cause. It already is. Already, all there is is wholeness. And then that within that wholeness, there's a contracted energy that feels it's lost that wholeness. Um, and it's looking for it. It can never find it because it's wholeness already. So it can't find that. Because it turns what it's looking for into a something. It can't find the wholeness, which is everything. But suddenly what can seem to only seem to happen is that that whole energy of separation simply is no more. When it is no more, it is recognized by no one, I'm afraid.
that it never was. Um, to be in your present, uh, to I go to, have, yeah, I, okay. I don't have a presence. I don't have anything. There's no one. There is only everything. There's no I. There's nothing that knows there's everything. There just is everything. It's indescribable and unknowable. Okay. So I need my question. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give something to the people? Can I? Give. Well, no, there is no I and there is nothing to give and there aren't any people to give it to. That's the radical nature of this communication. There is no one to give it to, there is only everything. And all that can come out of this is a response out of nothing to the question, can I find what I'm looking for? And the response to that is, no, you can never find what you're looking for because you are looking for a something. What you really long for is everything. So it can't be found. That's what this is about. That's what these meetings are about. People come here seeking something and it's possible that some of them might go away with the realization at least that there isn't anything to find. That already what they long for is all that, all that is. Walking down from the, this meeting, the walking down from this meeting is what is. It's what they long for. It can never leave them. It's the constant. Love that never leaves. Is this longing naturally? The longing, well, no, the longing, you, in a way you can't say it's natural, it's certainly understandable because at a very early age, the, 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 the young baby that is boundless that suddenly gets a sense of being an individual. Self awareness arises, self consciousness arises, and then it, the individual is imprisoned in that state of separation. So as the child grows up, so that state of separation develops and the, and, the, and the person tries to deal with the world it's living in, which is totally understandable, but you couldn't call it natural. It's just very understandable. But it's a, it's a, it's a dilemma which the seeker can never free itself from because the seeker is the dualism from which it's trying to escape. It isn't, it doesn't enter something called dualism, it is the dualism. It is schizophrenic, it's the dualism that it's trying to escape from when it never can. Whatever anybody suggests it in terms of teachings or processes or whatever, it can't escape from what it is. But suddenly that whole sense of separation can simply evaporate. So the seek? Seeking ends when the seeker is no more. And, and, and never was. And course. never was. And the, never was. The illusion of that there is a seeker yeah. ends, maybe. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful and also the seeker is very fascinated by its own story. It's totally fascinated by its own life story and the idea, in many cases, that it will one day find enlightenment or liberation or whatever you like to call it. So it's com com it constantly is invested in that seeking. So the, the seeking keeps alive the hindrance totally. for finding. Yeah, it feeds and, separation. And, yes. It, is the sep it feeds separation constantly. And the other thing that, that supports separation is awareness and consciousness. Those are the things that, that arise in the child when it self-awareness, self-consciousness, and the use of awareness or consciousness keeps the, see the seeker locked into individuality. I am real. It enters what I call the I am real dream, and then it, it then is supported by everything in that, in that constancy of belief that it is a real individual. When the idea of being a separate individual Uh, drops, falls Apparently. away, falls mm. away, um, but the people are still, the human beings are different, so... Well, there isn't, uh, it depends what you mean by human being, there is a human form there, there is a physiology, but there is no individuality, mm -hmm. there is no centre anymore. The whole feeling of the centre, which happened when you were a child, simply is no more, there just is physiology. 
corresponding and reacting in the apparent world. Okay, maybe the center drops away, but uh, still um, my eyes, I'm looking from here. I don't look okay. from any, any other place, no. or I smell from here. So isn't that a kind of no, natural center? They are not your eyes. There is no my anymore. There's no ownership. Seeing happens, but it doesn't happen to anyone. It just happens. Like so, everything, feeling, sound, thought, mm -hmm. whatever, is simply what is apparently happening in the whole. But only apparently. Okay, so there's a space and everything is happening in that space? Apparently. Or? Apparently. Uh -huh. It's only an appearance of nothing. It's nothing. You know, this wall, this painting behind me is nothing walling or nothing painting. It's no thing appearing to be this. So it isn't real. It's only an appearance. And it's also not an energy phenomenon? Well, it depends what you mean by energy. I use the word energy. For this, for the, uh, in the same way as I you would use the word everything. Everything is energy, you could say. But it's nothing appearing as energy. And it isn't nothing somewhere then appearing as energy. It is both are one. That's what's unknowable. So and in your talks you, you, you speak about that mm. and people are asking questions. Mm. So you are a kind of destroyer? Absolutely. In Amsterdam, I'm, no, I'm known as the Terminator. Uh -huh. It's a destruction, it's a deconstruction, actually, of the, of the reality that, that the individual uh, experiences and totally believes in. So people come here with a, an experience of reality, and it's possible that that reality will be disturbed or un will unravel when a very radical proposal about that reality is offered. But that's only words and concepts. There's something far more liberating that happens in these meetings, which is absolutely beyond words, and it's energetic. It is that the contracted energy that the individual brings and feels can melt into the whole again. So contracted energy has always a place in the body? Or? Yeah, usually in the center, in the, or in the head. But it's a sort of center, it's a feeling of a center, which is the contracted, the apparent contracted energy taking form as individuality. And that grows and grows and becomes more powerful. And then it's possible that in, in being open to something that is beyond the person, that, that contracted energy can simply melt into the whole again. It's only boundless energy that's, contra that's apparently contracted. And this is only a story. So it's only the, the story. Yes. Everything is only an apparent story. It's nothing appearing as a story. And if we talk about something, it's always a story. Yeah. But it points to that which it isn't. Those meetings are about communicating or sharing in a story which points to that which isn't. Which points to that which can't be known and isn't a story. This. <laughs> the statements, statements that you are giving now and in your talks, could I say this is a kind of method to talk in that way to the no, people? No, it isn't at all. It's a response out of nothing. There isn't anyone here with some knowledge, old knowledge that they're trying to share or teach other people to learn. There isn't anyone here. There isn't anyone there, actually. There but there isn't anyone here who has a system or a method which is then passing on to other people. This is simply a response out of nothing. And there, there are statements that are made in the book that seem to come out of nothing, but they don't have any agenda of any kind at all. There is no agenda in these meetings. Actually, these meetings, as far as the individual seeker is concerned, are of no value at all. So they're very much rejected by the seeker. The reject seeker doesn't want to hear this message. But in some way or other, something else breaks up. Some sort of 
held feeling or belief seems to break up, not with everyone. But... Uh, when you talk, it's very spontaneously. Yeah, totally. When you start a sentence, you know the end already? Not at all. <laughs> and when I finished answer, responding to a question, if somebody asks me, what did I just say, and can I repeat it, I can't. You are sometimes surprised what you are saying? I'm very surprised. And in the early days, I, in the early days when all this started happening, I was asked questions and the mind heard the question. The brain heard the question and said, Tony, we don't know the answer to this. And as the person finished the words, yeah. a response just came out of nowhere. And I was sitting there, thinking, where does this come from? Well, it's like that now. But, I'm, but I suppose I'm used to <laughs> So we had already the uh, issue about uh, cause and effect. Uh, would you say in practical life their cause and effect is uh, sometimes necessary to, if something is not working, I'm looking what is the mm. cause maybe of it? Mm. Yes, of course, you call it practical life. I know exactly what you mean. Ordinary practical life is apparently happening, but it's only in appearance, of course. And cause and effect, which is, seems to be involved in that, is, of course, also only in appearance. It's not real. There's no such thing as anything that is real, including time, space, or cause and effect. They appear to. They appear to take place. What it exactly means that there is no time, really? There is no real time. There is only an apparent time and an apparent space. Mm -hmm. So it turns everything that the normal individual sees as their reality completely on its head. Mm -hmm. Just completely. Because individuals think that everything, that they are real and their story is real, that you are real, she's real, and that I have to relate to you because you're over there, a separate from me. All of that falls apart. What can you say to the sentence, uh, nothing ever happens? Absolutely. That's really what this is saying. There isn't anything happening at all. Nothing's happening. And there is also no future and no, no, no past? No. No. no, there is just the immediacy of what is and is not. And, and those are the words that can get as near as possible to this, but they words. But it's, uh, it's touched in the way to the attempt to find words, in a way it touches uh, for my feeling. I yeah, know. yeah. That's what appears. I mean, there's nothing wrong with words. Some people say you shouldn't say anything, you should be silent. But what's wrong with words and what's wrong with silence? They are both what is. Words are energy in a certain form, and so is silence. There isn't one thing. In, 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 in the whole, there is no polarity. So there isn't a better or worse. Or above or below, or in the or an outer. There just is what is and is not. And beyond the word, there are silence? Sorry? Beyond the word, there is silence? Not for me, no. There is just words and there's silence. They're both the same thing. It, the, one isn't beyond the other. I have to say that when we have retreats, or even in meetings of this sort, but certainly we're, we're residentials, we go on talking and sharing, <laughs> and it <laughs> slows down and becomes quieter and quieter. There's a sort of checkmate point where people realize there's nothing really that they can ask anymore. And how your retreats are organized? You, uh, you have talks there or you well, in the meetings? It's in, just you have two, three talks a day or how does it you work? Yeah, two or three talks a day, yeah. Uh -huh. But no exercises? Oh, well, there wouldn't be anything because there's no idea that there is anyone. Don't forget, this is a totally different, there isn't anyone, there isn't anything. So the, the idea of giving somebody an exercise or, suggest, or giving somebody some advice is ridiculous, it, it just doesn't happen.
That's why I did say before, for the seeker, these, these meetings are of no value of any kind. The w worst place for a seeker to come is to run these meetings. But, on the, uh, but it attracts the people, yeah, maybe yeah. Mm. just because of that. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, is the ident identification with the body necessary for life? Oh, absolutely not, because the body is just another something, or it's just another appearance of nothing. The, the problem for the me is that the me comes to believe that the body is its own body. This is my body and I live in here. Tony, when I was Tony Parsons, I felt that I was a person and I was bounded by this skin. I lived in this skin and this was my body. When, when that Tony Parsons energy simply was no more, the body is just like everything else, what is happening. It's not anybody's body. It has no significance of any kind at all. And to hear when somebody calls your name, for that you don't need any identification? No, only the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain still functions. The brain is only a, an organism that functions within the story. So in the story somebody might say Tony and the brain would recognize that as a call to respond maybe. And that's only just what happens? Yeah. And no meaning in it? There isn't any meaning or purpose or in purpose. any of this at all. I'm going to say that again because most people don't hear it when I say it. In the whole of this there is no meaning or purpose. There is just what is and is not, apparently. And this is full and empty at the same yeah. time? It's empty fullness, my favourite term. <laughs> empty fullness. The formless form, the relative absolute, but they're all words, of course. Yes, and this fullness has a character of love? This fullness doesn't have the character of love, this fullness is unconditional love, which can't be comprehended or known. Because there is nobody to have a condition? No, and there is nobody, no. It's unconditional love. It vibrates, vibrates. I, I don't use that idea. That that can get the mind can get into making that into another something. It's simply aliveness, mm -hmm. apparent aliveness. And this aliveness is felt by different human beings in different ways? Well, there aren't any human beings, of course, in there. Well, it depends what you mean by human beings. The body is there. The body is, okay. Uh, but there aren't any individuals mm -hmm. in that. They, there is no centre in the body anymore. Well, there isn't anyway. But uh, there are all sorts of different energy, in my terms, is the everything energy, and it has all sorts of different shapes and forms that go on, but none of them have any meaning or purpose. And nothing is better or mm. worse or something? That's dualism. You know, the dualistic individual lives in better or worse, in or out, or above or below or whatever. Beauty and ugliness. There is no beauty or ugliness, there just is. And if things are happening, it's like war or something. That's what's happening. That's what's happening, mm. happening just. Nobody starts war, nobody does anything. There isn't anybody. Wars start. It's simply energy in that form. It's emptiness in that form. Okay. But when people are, for example, um, go for demonstration against War or something is also what happens. Right? It's, it's all the same. It's all the same. And when people seek enlightenment or liberation, that's the same thing. It's nothing seeking its own enlightenment. What would you say is a wise way of live one's life? There isn't one. But one doesn't have a life, so there can't be any wise way of living it or any foolish way of living it. There is no one. There is no one.
But as long as the people uh, oh. had have the idea to be somebody, they might be happy if you can give them uh, no, advice. Well, they won't get any. They get nothing from this. There is no agenda. There's nothing for sale. But if they want advice about how to live, uh, then uh, uh, everyone in, in the world lives uh, in that sense is uniquely living their own story of their own life. And there's enough advice on YouTube to satisfy them for a little while. And when they get that advice, they probably would experience feeling good, but only for a little while. Because the one thing they long for has never been found. And can never be found. No, no. It already is. There's no process of finding. There's no process. At all. Nothing's happening. They can appear to be a person, of course. Mm -hmm. Is life predetermined? No, not at all. It would need. For predetermination to be anything, it would need time and space. There isn't any. So everything is happening spontaneously? Only apparently, yes. Apparently. But it has no meaning or purpose of any kind. And it is, has no significance. Nothing has any significance. But beauty? No, but beauty is lives in the story of the world, in the polarised world. Yeah, this is beautiful, that, therefore that's ugly. This is good, therefore that's bad. That's pure dualism. All there is, is what is. But dualism is also happening in the heads yeah, of the apparently, people, yes. apparently. Like so that's else. also that. That is also life. Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, nothing is denied. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And did you ever find a, meet a person or some form looking like a person uh, which, <laughs> which never um, got an eye, an idea of an eye which was growing up from the childhood uh, no, I've without? Never met anyone like that, no. But this doesn't matter <laughs> anyhow. Nothing matters. Uh -huh. That's freedom. This, this, this is about the ultimate freedom of nothing mattering and everything being what it is. It's amazing. Uh -huh. like, you know, Claire and I, and we are stunned by this every time we talk about it together or talk about it with other people. It's so stunning. It's so... Um, well, radical. I can't think of a word, but it's so radical. But it's so, so explosive. It blows the whole of what I thought was life into, a, into the air. Yes, and it blows the question of the interviewer in the air. <laughs> <laughs> As well. Yeah, but it's, the interview is like the meetings, you know. There's something that goes on and people watch these things. And we, we know from a lot of it, we've been doing this for 20 years, uh, all sorts of things, you know, I could say something there uh, and, and somebody somewhere, wow. And then I can say something to somebody else who has been to retreat for 20 years and I go on saying it and they don't hear it. It's what Claire calls selective... Um, Hearing. Selective deafness. Selective... Deafness. Deafness. Mm -hmm. There is a selective deafness. People will be in there and they'll hear what's being said here in there and they won't hear it because it's not that it's not that there just isn't an open openness to it it's amazing but nobody's slain. and then they can come later on and say hey you the other day you said and i've been saying it for years before but that's the first time for them yeah. it's suddenly when it's um when it's life um when it's the right moment for mm, life, then it's happening. It yeah. yeah. It's a most mystical. Yeah. Uh, and it's not possible to understand it. Yeah. It's just oh, better, yeah. better to give up to understand everything. Yeah. Would you say this? Yeah, because this is pointing to unknowing, of course. Mm -hmm. The final collapse of the individual is, and all that's left is unknown. 
So, of course, there's also no free will because there is nobody who could have a free will. It's oh, no, just. No, no, no. But it can happen that I feel uh, my energy is going to something. Mm. For example, for me doing this kind mm. of video, so mm. it's not. It's just life that's happening. Totally, it's not your energy. It's, it's not my energy, energy, no. It's true, and we are sort of attracted to certain things, or the body seems to be attracted to certain things, and other people, other bodies are attracted to other things. But it's all a kaleidoscope without, which is wonderful to be and without meaning. Yes. That's the freedom of it. Yes. But the mind always uh, likes to put a meaning yeah. on it, mm. or with it. You like to have a purpose. Me is lost without a purpose. That's why this is not attractive to me. Yeah, but the people come anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Good. Some other questions? <laughs> no. No, it's fine. Some other issue you want to like no, to talk no, to? No, nothing. No, that seems to cover it quite well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.